Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. Hello and welcome to another video and welcome aboard Premium Class on Talis. Today I'm taking the train instead of flying all the way from Amsterdam to Paris via Rotterdam and Brussels. This is a fantastic train trip. I really hope you come with me and find out why taking the train is often a lot better than flying. Come and join me. For today's trip, we'll be setting off at the Grand Amsterdam Centraal Station, one of the finest railway stations in Europe. The station is right at the heart of Amsterdam city centre and plugged into four metro lines, eight tram lines, dozens of bus routes and the city's ferry network, which gives it a great head start over flying for this trip. Driving from Amsterdam to Paris will take you about six hours if you get lucky with the traffic. We'll be doing the trip at a maximum speed of 300 kilometers per hour, and even with four stops, we'll arrive in Paris just three hours and 20 minutes after we leave. Now, Google Maps is quite clever, but not so clever it would stop itself from suggesting I take the plane for this trip. It claims the plane takes an hour and 15 minutes, but that doesn't factor in getting to or from the city centers, security at the airport, passport control, check-in times, and all the other significant time penalties that come with flying. Getting from Charles de Gaulle Airport to the centre of Paris by public transport alone takes over 45 minutes. Anyway, why bother with the plane? Paris Gare du Nord, which is where we arrive, is next to the city centre, plugged into all the public transport systems, and yeah, need I go on? You can spend some of the time you save over flying by admiring the station here in Amsterdam. It's an exceptional building dating from 1889 and is the most visited of all of the country's designated national heritage sites. Talis issues e-tickets, so you can just scan the barrier with your phone screen and in you go. There's no check-in to worry about and no cumbersome security check. The whole journey takes place in Europe's Schengen area, so there are no passport formalities either. The train leaves from platform 15 today. I'm here a little bit early because I want to see the train come in. Um, it should take us over three hours uh, to get to Paris today, going via Rotterdam and Brussels. The Dutch railway system has one of the most striking liveries of any national rail operator in the world. Central Station is a hub for dozens of local, regional and intercity routes. This is our train, a Talis PBA unit, which is a variant of the TGV Réseau trains you see in France. This PBA unit can work on three different voltages from the overhead line, which gives it international compatibility across three countries. There are four standard carriages, a cafe car, and three first-class carriages. Two of these are branded as Comfort, and one is Talus Premium, the higher of the two grades of first class available on the train. The Talus and TGV trains may be a classic design, but the Dutch Koploper train is a 70s classic and the first train many people associate with the Dutch railway system. If, like me, you've booked a premium ticket, that's the highest class of ticket on Talis, you're actually able to enter the NS International Lounge here at Amsterdam Central. And here is the NS International Lounge, which seems to be shared with the Rigus Express facility here at Amsterdam Central. And it is right at the end of Platform 2, where if you look a little bit more closely, you can see these fantastic hotels, which face over the platforms. I don't know why I didn't book in here. Really should have done. Of course, if you're smart, you can use the side entrance to these platforms and access the lounge without even entering the underbelly of the station. There's a little hack for you. 
The lounge is accessible only to premium passengers, and to be honest, it's quite basic. It's quiet, has good Wi-Fi, and you can grab a coffee, but I wouldn't arrive here too early. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas, but Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash wingingit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Okay, so that's quite handy. There's a little diagram there that tells you I need to be in zone A. And we are currently in the zone F. Just gonna head down the platform a bit. And that's where first class carriage one will be. And that's where my seat is in premium. And here we are. To the right is something a bit special, we'll look at later. But for now, here's Talis Premium, which features a one, two seat layout. British train companies take note. The overhead racks can carry a full size cabin bag with no problems. It's exactly 11.15 when we leave Amsterdam Central. To the right is a short rail stub, which is all that remains of the Vesterdok railway yards, long since redeveloped. Our first stop for this trip is Amsterdam Airport Schiphol, where we dive underground beneath the runways. Between here and Brussels, we maintain a healthy speed of over 170 miles per hour, about 275 kilometers per hour. So let's take a quick look at the seat, which contains two charge points, and yes, the bin was emptied before we set off today. There's a footrest too. I find these a bit irritating, but if you're a bit shorter, you'll find these quite useful. 
they can be stowed away if you don't fancy using them. The seats themselves are very comfortable. They're well sprung and with a lovely soft headrest and they're probably one of the comfiest seats on any European train. There's also an electric recline function if you want to kick back and relax. A very big fold down table is also at the seat, which means eating a meal or working on a laptop won't be a problem at all. There are full length blinds at the windows too, in case you get bored of watching the low countries slip past your window. So a quick explainer about the classes of service on Talis. Standard is the basic level of service, ordinary 2-2 seating layout and no extra features. Comfort however has the same seats as we have here in Premium, but doesn't have any of the bells and whistles you'll find here. Think of it as a basic first class, bigger seats and not much more. Premium, however, features refundability and flexibility, lounge access, newspapers, taxi reservations, not quite sure how that works to be honest. Oh, and not listed here because at the time of this video's release, it's suspended due to COVID, but also this video was filmed during COVID, so I'm kind of confused. Anyway, not mentioned is the meal service. Premium normally includes a cold meal, which is similar to what you'd find on a business class flight of this length or services like Eurostar. I think this sort of meal for lunch is perfect, although bear in mind it's basically the same portions and still a cold meal for dinner if you decide to travel in the evening. These trains do look in need of a refurb, but to be fair, everything works and the toilets were clean. Just my usual reminder though for British people, the flush mechanism is on the floor and foot operated. If you're hoping to see lots of scenery on this trip, well, you can see a lot of flat countryside, but in built up areas, this soundproof sheeting will stop you seeing too much of the towns you bypass. The first major stop is Rotterdam. After this, we accelerate over the wide Holland's Deep River. Let's look at the rest of the carriage. There are plenty of storage places for bigger suitcases out here. And there's also a disabled accessible toilet here too, which is of course much larger than the standard one at the other end of the carriage. Belgium has nearly as big a problem with graffiti as I do with the autofocus on this camera. It's all over the place, I'm afraid. Mm. 
and finally 186 miles per hour or 300 kilometers an hour. That's our maximum speed which we'll maintain for most of the journey to Brussels and on to Paris. And it's time to remind you that liking, commenting and subscribing to me on YouTube is free and if you subscribe you'll be notified of all my future videos. You can also follow my travels in real time on Twitter and Instagram too. So here's that little secret I referred to when I boarded. This is a mobile office of sorts. I can't see any reference to this on Talis' website at all, and I don't think it's possible to book it. But it's cool, right? It's right at the very front of the carriage, and while it's a public area of the train, it just seems to be a very well-kept secret that it even exists. This is Brussels South, our last stop before Paris and where the train really fills up. Now we arriving at Paris towards final destination of the train. We would like to remind you that it remains mandatory to wear a mask at the station. Please keep the and distance from the other travelers when they parking from the train. Thank you for your cooperation. We wish you a nice day and we hope to see you soon again. We arrive into Gare de Nord bang on time. Three hours and 20 minutes, city centre to city centre. Overall, a great train trip and definitely preferable to flying. Talis also operates from Paris and Brussels to Cologne and Dortmund in Germany, so maybe next time you need to travel, give them a try. Anyway, don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.